Welcome to Shut Up and Game. Today, I will be showing you how to master your workshop. We will start with the very basics. If you already have a grasp on the basics, there will be timestamps below so you can get right to the juicy stuff. First, let's get you properly acquainted with the Isleworks interface. At the top of the interface, you will notice a current and next season field. These represent the current and next week, respectively. Each week begins and ends on Tuesday, the weekly reset day. The day highlighted in yellow is the day you are currently on. For me, it is day 4, and I have it set as a rest day. You can tell that by the icon it is displaying. To change your rest days, just click this button here. Keep in mind, you are required to have two rest days for each season, and you should always be resting on day one. I usually put my second rest day at the end of the week, so I have plenty of time to switch it to an earlier day in the season. The groove, displayed in the upper right-hand corner of the interface, shows you how many efficient crafts you have completed. Don't worry about this number, though. Groove will come naturally, as we will only be using efficient crafts, and there are much more impactful things to focus on. Each column within your agenda represents one of your workshops. Click on one of the plus signs to schedule an item to be crafted by the corresponding workshop. Here we have selected some fire sand. This item takes 4 hours to craft, as denoted by the time field. These are the shortest available crafts to schedule and as such, are not worth very much. These are generally used first, since there will be no efficiency bonus applied to your first scheduled item. That is where the category field comes into play. This item has two categories. Concoctions and unburied treasures. This means, if I schedule an item sharing either of these two categories following it, I will get an efficiency bonus. When an item with an efficiency bonus is crafted, one additional unit is crafted as well, effectively doubling your profits. Never schedule an item without an efficiency bonus. This of course does not apply to the first item you schedule, as it has no item preceding it. Next we will discuss arguably the most important part of this interface, the supply and demand menu. You can find it by clicking the icon I have highlighted on the screen. This is where the magic happens. The first thing to note are the filter settings. These allow you to narrow your search down and are vital for determining the best times to craft specific items, which we will be discussing later. Just below that, we have the list of products. You can hover over each item to see what categories they have, but no more information is shared. Next is the popularity field. This value is set at the beginning of every week and does not change until the beginning of the next season. Popularity ranges from low to very high. The higher the popularity, the more that item is worth. The same is true in reverse for the next field, supply. Supply ranges from non-existent to overflowing. The lower the supply, the more an item is worth when it is sold. The most ideal circumstance you want for a scheduled item is for it to have very high popularity and a non-existent supply. This chart shows how popularity and supply affect the sell price of an item. As you can see, an item with very high popularity and a non-existent supply sells for over two times as much. Combine this with an efficient craft and you are starting to roll in the calories. The next field, in combination with supply, will be the main data points we focus on during the week. The demand shift ranges from plummeting to skyrocketing and tell you how many items are being added or removed to your supply for the next day, respectively. Each stage of demand shift is approximately 3 units, and each stage of supply is approximately 6 units. Crafting items will add to your supply as well. However, unlike the demand shift, crafted items are immediately applied to the supply level upon completion. 
With these values in mind, we will always be able to tell what items will be peaking on the next day. For example, the Isleworks Aura here on my list. Its supply is currently insufficient and the demand shift is skyrocketing. Skyrocketing is the highest amount possible being removed from your supply for the next day. It is two stages above none, which is easy to tell by the twin arrow icons. Each stage is approximately three units, so that means there will be six plus units removed from my insufficient supply on the next day. As each stage of supply is approximately six units, it will be enough to knock it down by one stage to non-existent. This is called a strong peak. If an item remains with an insufficient supply for two days in a row, or non-existent for a single day, the Admiral sends a shipment of that item to your island, increasing the supply to sufficient for the rest of the season. Knowing this, we can tell any item with an insufficient supply and increasing demand will never reach non-existent, as the minus 3 to supply by the single stage of demand shift is not enough to lower the 6 units of supply. There is nothing wrong with this, and we can even craft those items now, if we have any holes to fill yet in our agenda. They won't be worth any more tomorrow, and will never be worth any more than right now for the rest of the season. The predicted demand field is simply telling you what the popularity of an item will be in the next season. With this information, you can get a rough idea of the items you will be aiming for next week. This has little bearing on our current season, unless you need to ration out materials. And that is it for the basics. I know that was quite a bit. Several minutes without any music, explosions, or boobs. I am sure I lost the attention of the average person by now, so if you stuck around, you are amazing. As a thank you, here are some boobs exploding to music to help wet your palate for the main course. <laughs> Now that we have all of the pieces, we can start to put the puzzle together. You will need to record the supply and demand shift of each item for at least the first four days. You can use a workshop calculator, which will require this information anyway, or create your own spreadsheet to track it all yourself. There will be links in the description. On day one, we can successfully predict the peaking items for day two. But, we cannot predict any other days, as every pattern begins with a sufficient supply, with any demand shift level. Day 2 is similar. We can predict which items will be peaking on day 3. And, now we will be able to begin predicting the rest of the week. At this stage, we can tell that any items with a sufficient supply and no demand shift on day 2 will be peaking on either day 4 or 5 and any items with an insufficient supply and no demand shift will be peaking on day 6 or 7. This can be useful to begin stocking up on materials, especially the rare ones you can only get from your granary. On day 3, we can of course reliably predict the items peaking on day 4. We will also be able to build on our data from the previous day and begin narrowing things down. Now we will be able to tell which items will be peaking on day 5, but we will not be able to determine if they are a strong or weak peak due to the pattern not diverging yet. The weak peak for day 6 will now be obvious, but the strong peak is still unclear as the pattern does not diverge from the day 7 peaks at this point. Keep in mind that every item has a sufficient supply and plummeting demand shift after it has peaked. It is important not to confuse items that have already peaked, for ones that will be peaking on day 6 or 7. On day 4, we have all of the data we need to predict the remaining days. We can of course predict the items peaking on the next day, as usual. But now we know which items are the strong peak on day 6. We can also tell which items will have a strong or weak peak on day 7. Here are all 12 of the demand shift patterns side by side for reference. And that is pretty much it. 
all of the tools you need to raise your stonks. There are still some nuances, such as substituting items due to lack of materials and a few other obstacles you may reach. But, you will be able to handle them now. If you don't want to think for yourself, you can always join a Discord such as Poking Paradise. Some helpful individuals there will post their recommendations for your agenda each week. Who knows how long this will happen, though. Maybe by the time you watch this video, they will have lost interest. At least you know what to do now. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. I am trying to hit 100 subscribers so I can at least make posts about future content. Until next time, thanks for watching. Take care and good luck out there.